Did you know you can buy a gallon of whole milk off of Amazon? This is an actual thing. You can buy and get shit to you. It even has user reviews and everything. Has anyone ever bought this? I have. There was a lot of packaging to go through just for the gallon of milk. The best buy date was the day before it was delivered, so fair warning. <laughs> yes, don't take 10 minutes out of your day just to go down to the nearest grocery store to buy fresh milk there. No, 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 no. Pay $20 for a single gallon of milk and wait a week for it to show up to your door that's probably going to look like this once it gets to you. <laughs> Welcome to the internet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I like to shop online, and I'm going to bet that you probably do as well. It's super convenient to be able to just type in what you're looking for and get it without having to talk to anyone or even leave your house. But let's be honest with ourselves, all of what I just mentioned is great and all, but the real appeal to shopping online is when you get to open up what you just ordered. We wonder why unboxing videos are so popular, yet we get so excited to open up our packages once it shows up to our doorstep, like we already know what's inside the box, yet it still feels like we're opening up a Christmas gift. We love packages so much we sing songs about them. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. Brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Not a bright colored present tied with ribbon. No, a brown paper package tied with string is one of the best things in the world. Do you think people ever sing songs about how great and adorable us reptiles are? Well, spoiler alert, they don't. They're too busy singing about the small animals covered in fur like kittens. It's bad enough that people love mammals so much, but not only did I get upstaged by a kitten in this song, I got upstaged by a brown paper box. Do you have any idea how embarrassing that is? Life really isn't fair sometimes. Nope, it certainly is not. What? Uh, who are you? I'm Little Dragon Animations. You asked me to help you out with the video, remember? Did I do that? Maybe I did. I don't know. I'd expect to remember because Little is probably the last name I'd expect a dragon to have. You're a crocodile named Gator. Why should I take anything that just came out of your mouth seriously? <laughs> Alright, fair enough. But remember, it's Reactigator. Reactigator, dial. The dial part is very important. Anyway, getting back on track. Online shopping is great, but there's a lot about it that isn't so great. For example, auctions on eBay. How many people have actually won an auction on eBay? It's always the same story. You have the highest bid for the longest time, then at the very last second some toolbox bids one cent higher than you and wins it. I never do auctions on eBay anymore. If I'm going to shop online, I'm only choosing the option that guarantees I'm going to be getting what I paid for. Though I have to admit, there is a pretty big draw towards those auctions. They give off that illusion that you could get away with buying an item for dirt cheap before it inevitably goes above the trending price anyway. In fact, just why are things online so expensive? I mean, look at this. What? Who in their right mind would pay over $1,000 for a video game that's a quarter of a century old? Oh, here's one for a decent pro. Oh, 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 don't you just love these types of people? The people who try to trick you into thinking you're getting a good deal on a product by making the initial price super low, but then spiking up the shipping cost? <laughs> Let me tell you, if there was a top 10 kinds of people's list, these folks would probably make number three. Point one. Four. All the inconveniences we've mentioned in this video so far have been annoyances while looking for the stuff you want to buy. But let's get into the part where you've actually paid for it and it shows up at your house. Everybody has some sort of story where they purchase something online only to find out once it gets to them that it wasn't exactly what they were looking for. How many times have you bought broken devices because you neglected to read sold for parts when it was listed? Or how about a scenario like this? When I was in middle school, I had a friend who really wanted to play Super Smash Bros. Melee, so he bought it online. Once the package arrived at his house, he opened it, only to find the game manual. Ah, uh, yeah. Buying the game manual or case instead of the game itself. Ah, classic online shopping mistake. Oh yeah, and for you people out there who sell games online with no case and it's only the disc by itself... Die. 
one story I have where I thought I was buying something else online than what the thing actually was happened when I was about 10. I'm a huge fan of Pokemon and I really want a Charizard figure because, duh. So I saved a bunch of money and looked on Amazon for one. During my search, I found an offer that not only sold a Charizard figure, but a bunch of other Pokemon figures along with it. I freaked out. Then when the figures got here, they were tiny. Like, I'm talking like figures you put on the end of your pencil kind of deal here. I was just a dumb kid. I didn't really understand shopping online back then and how you should, you know, read the description before you buy it. But now, I finally have the big Charizard figure that I was looking for. So everything worked out in the end. There we go. <clears throat> These types of mistakes are errors that everyone's going to make at some point, especially if you're just starting out with online shopping. But now let's move on from simple mistakes to something more serious. Intentional false advertising from people who just want your money. Yep, let's start sharing some scam stories. We each have a little story to tell about how we got scammed online, and since I'm such a good host, I'm going to let my <clears throat> little friend here share his story first. If you would. Uh... So, uh, someone I know was trying to get a set of phones that had a deal on it where you get the phones for free for the price of one and a shared data plan. This was something that would help because he needed phones for his children so they could communicate with him about things they need, or for school, or things like that. However, come a few years later, we find out that he's being charged for each phone, when he was only supposed to be charged for one of them. They lied to him. Some of you might be thinking, maybe he read it wrong, or maybe he mistook it for another company. No, he went to the store and asked the people there in person if that information was correct. They said it was. But apparently they were wrong or not telling him the whole truth. The situation is under control now though, and things are being fixed, so no worries there. So that's my story. Um, now, react to Gator Dial. I don't mean to be an elongator, but I don't think we need an investigator for this one. But I'll be an instigator and have you be our navigator and lead us to your story. Hmm. Well, um, you certainly don't drag on about things now, do you? If you guys haven't been able to guess at this point, I really like video games. And as a result, I like to collect them, regardless of its age or quality for that matter. I seriously don't understand those people who just get rid of their games because they're too old. What if you want to revisit it in the future, but now you can't because you gave it away? But when it comes to buying the old games, I really don't have much of a choice but to buy online. Sure, there are some vintage stores that sell old games and stuff like that, but they never have the stuff you're looking for. You think you're gonna walk into one of these stores and find a copy of Super Mario RPG on the SNES? No, you're not. You're gonna find another copy of that stupid Little Mermaid 2 pinball game for the Game Boy Color that nobody wants and never seems to leave. Shopping online, I can always find someone selling the specific game I'm looking for. Sure, I could just use an emulator or download a re-release, but I'm a sucker for authenticity and I want to play the games the way they are originally meant to be played. But nowadays, technology that was considered advanced back in 1985 is now accessible to the average person and as a result, fake reproduction cards come into the picture. A fake reproduction card is a copy of an old game, usually cartridge based, that wasn't originally manufactured by their official companies but instead were created by individual third parties in heaven knows where. These people try to sell you a counterfeit copy claiming it's the original game. Sometimes it's pretty obvious that the one they're selling is fake, but more often than not, they're a little more tricky. You have to be on the lookout for little signs. It's a little different for every system, but most of the universal warning signs are that the label is too glossy, the ESRB rating or the company logo could be printed funny, the plastic holding the game feels cheap, and much more. These counterfeit copies will turn on if you plug them in your system, but there's no quality control behind these copies, so you never know what you're gonna get. They could potentially destroy your system if you're really unlucky. Before you shop online for retro games like these, I recommend you search how to spot a counterfeit for your specific system. Usually you can avoid this problem if you just type in authentic with your search. But do you think I knew that back when I first started buying games online? No, I didn't. I first learned about these scumbaggy people back in high school when I wanted to play Pokemon Ruby on the Game Boy Advance. At the time, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby were the newest Pokemon games. I grew up playing Pokemon Sapphire on my cousin's Game Boy, and the nostalgia trip those games made me go through was... Oh, it was just too much to bear. I needed to revisit those old games so badly. I went onto eBay and found an offer for not just Ruby, but 
all the Game Boy Advance Pokemon games brand new for 35 bucks. It sounded too good to be true. Because it was. Guys, if you ever see an offer online that seems too good to be true, 99% of the time it is. The games came in, I started playing Ruby. I beat the first gym, saved, and put it away. A little bit later, I came back, and no save file was there. I tried again, and sure enough, the save file was gone again. Ruby couldn't save the game. Now, I had a similar problem with Pokemon Silver, but I was able to fix it by opening up the game and replacing the save battery. So I searched up if I could do the same thing with Ruby, but then I found out that Ruby doesn't use a battery to save. The only reason it could be doing this is if it was a fake reproduction card. And I would know if it was a fake reproduction card if a message appears right after the title of the screen saying, the previous save file will be loaded. The game can be played. No. No! That wasn't even the only one that was defective. Sapphire couldn't do timed events like growing berries, Emerald's Pokedex was screwed up, and none of them could transfer Pokemon in newer games. I was pissed. I basically spent $35 on pieces of plastic. Well, Reactigator, why didn't you just return them? Well, you see, I got the games right before I left on a summer trip to Europe. I realized this problem while I was over there, and by the time I got home, the time period to return things on eBay ended, and I've been stuck with these faulty pieces of crap ever since. And I'm still irritated about it four years later. Just make sure you're careful when you're shopping online, all right? I'm a lot more cautious nowadays, and I did manage to get the real deal Pokemon GBA games, but it's not going to change the fact that back then I wasted my money. I made this video to complain a little about the nature of online shopping in general, but the main reason was to warn you guys of scams like this. Most people aren't familiar with these counterfeit retro games, so I wanted to inform you innocent people. And also I wanted to do this.